Welcome back to Let's Clone. My name is Steven French, and this is the second game of this series. I've uh, gotten some work done with Bomberman, and this will be the first development log of that. If you saw in a previous video, I'm not going to base all of these as a tutorial, but kind of just doing a general log of the development and development log. Yeah, you got it. So if you're unaware, I do most of my coding live on Twitch. You can look down in the description for a link to that. So if you want to actually see me struggle through the code in real time, try to find me there. If you just want to keep up with the game, see what I've done, what I figured out, and how I did some of it, then yeah, this is where I'll be covering that. So let's jump into Bomberman. First, let's see what I have running. So as you can see, it looks somewhat like Bomberman. Got a little guy. I don't have any any uh, GUI or stats printed on the screen, but I have a world that resembles the Bomberman world, and it has all the bricks. I made this um, randomly generated. I can show you more about that in a second. But also, I've gotten as far as to plant bombs that explode and take out the environment, as well as I've added a cheat where I can up my power to the bombs just so I can play around with that power up. Got it. So Bomberman works. We know now that I'm capable of at least figuring this much out. What was really fun about this project is how I went about creating the map. Typically, I would just create the map and place walls everywhere there is a wall or place bricks everywhere there's a brick and you would end up rendering all of these objects into the game that take up data take up space you don't really need them there so I took another approach and to try to be a little smarter about how I coded this the approach that I took for this came from you heartbeast tutorial on how to make a randomly generating dungeon some uh, pretty useful code on how to use DS grids and I can show you a little bit of how they work now now, a DS grid you can think of as a matrix or a two-dimensional array. Instead of going through the game world and placing objects, I have created a code that just picks, makes an array of the size that I want. I've made it a 31 spaces by 14 spaces. And I go through that grid giving it a numeric value. Those values are negative 5 for floor, 6 for brick, 7 for wall, and 8 for void, which I actually haven't used for this game. But these are arbitrary numbers. I just chose from negative 5 on because GameMaker doesn't have preset information for those numbers. Negative 1 refers to something already. So basically, I have a matrix of numbers. I've uh, made a nested loop, meaning that I'm going to loop through twice, once through the columns. And every iteration of the column, I'm going to loop through the entire row itself. Hopefully, I get some graphics up there to make a little more sense of this. So the first thing that I paid attention to was looping through when the column was at 0 and 1, which are the top two bars of the game, making all of those this wall variable. As you can see, grid, this uh, is kind of a getter setter indicator, I don't really know how to phrase it, and I've just picked the coordinates that I'm at and set it to a wall. Then for the walls that are throughout the room, I took my x coordinate modulo 2, my y coordinate modulo 2, and I placed wall pieces there. That's going to give me a brick every other space. Just kind of looking like you just saw in the game. After that, any remaining spaces, I gave a random chance from uh, I don't know, between 20 and 15 to create a brick integer there. So what I was left with is just a grid. Again, hopefully there's a graphic above me. And it's just numbers, just negative fives, sixes, and sevens. I also made sure to keep the top three corner pieces. I think that'd be up here for you guys the top three corner pieces as floor pieces, such that no bricks were spawned on top of the player or in a place that you just can't beat the level without killing yourself. I guess you can't play the level without killing yourself. And after that, all there is to do is look at each of those coordinates and then place an image of the object into the game world. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense because it does get a tad bit confusing. So I ran that same nested loop running through columns and rows and if I ever found a piece of the uh, the matrix that was labeled a floor, I added a tile to those coordinates with, oh, so those coordinates times the width of my images and the height of my, height? That's not, that's not a word, height of my image. So paste in images all across the board for floors. Did the same thing for bricks, same thing for walls. What that's left me with is what you already saw, a background that looks just like the game Although if you can check down here, only six objects have been rendered. There's the game map object, which is actually handling all of the background. The player himself, a system object, which I've just used for some debug code. 
a, uh, the bomb object, the bang object, which is just the explosion of the bomb, and an enemy which I haven't even used yet. But I don't have hundreds of blocks all over the map. I don't need them because they're all just one image. And as you can see, I actually collide into them quite nicely. So the collision is kind of the next concern as to getting this to work, which it shouldn't be a surprise. I also learned how to do these collisions from Harpy's channel as well. Basically what I have is my player has a step event where I just have a speed and I give him a horizontal and uh, vertical speeds just based on keyboard input. From there I plug in those values into my move script which kind of plugs into another script for grid place meeting. It, it works just like a position meeting or a place meeting of any other sort although it's custom written to handle these actual grids. So it's looking at the grid, looking at the bounding box size that I have chosen, so these 32 by 32 uh, bit images or sprites, and basically does the same type of comparison as with an object, just looking with the tile image that's underneath. And other than that, it works the same. It's a little bit tough to write all this code to get the, uh, the syntax working. So if anyone has any questions about that, please ask, and I would like to elaborate a little more. But yeah, it's kind of neat. I just move along the map whichever way, and instead of expecting to hit an object, I'm just looking at the ground, expecting to see a certain image. If I see the appropriate image, I can walk onto it. If it's a different type of image, be it a wall or a brick, I can't. And yeah, the movement is pretty smooth, and again, you don't render very many objects. DS grids are fantastic. After that was placing the bombs. Pretty simple, just given a bomb drop, if a keyboard press space, if I Oh, if I hit the key and I'm able to, to drop a bomb, which is a flag that I've already used before, then I can create a bomb at this location. From there, it was actually a little tricky because Game Maker kind of gave me hell with this. I guess in previous updates, for some reason, you can't stretch an image or at least stretch the collision mask of an image or the bounding box of an image. There's probably a way to do it. I couldn't figure it out. So I've taken a pretty dumb approach and from the bomb, when it goes to detonate, I've actually ran four different loops, one going in every direction. So I've created a blast object or a bang object, whatever I called it, in the center, and then I had it travel up for however many spaces relative to the player's power level, and then to the side, and then down, and then left. Doing that same grid place meeting, checking for the ground underneath me, checking if it was a floor, or if it was a brick, or if it was a wall, because the difference kind of matters now. So if the next place for a blast was not a floor, and it actually was a brick object, then I could create another blast image on top of it, but giving it an image index of three, which really quickly I have reserved to be the explosion of the block. So you'll see this at the center, this going out in any direction, this if the blast has completed its range without hitting a brick first, and this if it was actually the brick that blew up. And I just run that code four times in all directions, and the blast happens. It's pretty simple. Um, I've already set up a parent object for the enemy. Basically, if any of this, uh, any of the bang touches an enemy object, the enemy will die. But I just don't have any enemies in the map yet. So let's see that one last time, and hopefully this can be a pretty quick video. So yeah, here it is, Bomberman places bombs, runs away. Again, I've got that cheating power up so I can see how far things go. Currently, the guy doesn't die yet. There's no enemies in the game, and I haven't worked with those collisions. But this is just the first development log of Bomberman. Everything's moving pretty quick. It's uh, really fun to make so far. Some uh, challenges that I didn't expect, which is always nice. It's kind of like beating a boss in a game while making the game. So yeah, go development. Woot. I don't know, I'm sorry. So that is all for this quick devlog on Bomberman, guys. There's not too much to this game. It's not going to take me that much longer to beat it. So if you do want to watch me struggle through some of the code, then remember to try and find me on Twitch. If you want to keep up with these, do that. Again, I'm kind of making these to force myself to complete a project. So if it doesn't seem too entertaining at first, I'm sorry. I'm not very good at editing. I'm learning this as I go. And I just think it's kind of fun. So yeah, if you're interested in coding, feel free to follow along. If you have any questions about the code, if you want to learn how to actually implement any of these features, let me know. I can either answer in the comments or if there's enough demand for some of this information, then I'll make a video dedicated to that. Other than that, thank you for watching. Don't, uh, don't be shy to hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down button. Subscribe if you haven't and 
definitely leave me a comment just any of your thoughts let me know what's going on in your dome and I'll try to put it onto a screen if possible thank you very much and stick around for uh yeah part two so stick around for that enjoy bye so many thumbs too many thumbs <laughs>